Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be installing Mac OS through Docker. So let's get started. Now I mentioned this before when I was doing Android for Docker, the user by the name of Sick Codes has some really cool repositories on his GitHub. Uh, one of which is called Docker OS X, which allows you to install Mac OS on Docker. And that's what we're gonna be checking out today. Now, because I made that first video, which is Android on Docker, um, he actually reached out to me and he's a really cool guy. I mean, really smart, clever dude. I'm just saying we had some good conversations there and uh, yeah, some of the stuff that he does is pretty impressive. That's all I gotta say. Anyway, I'm gonna jump into my desktop. This is um, Ubuntu 2204 and I have not installed Docker or anything on here yet. So I'm gonna do this from scratch. I'm gonna jump into terminal and what I like to do to install Docker is just go to my PyHosted website, which is PyHosted.com, and just grab this script and run it. Because this actually does all the user creations, add the Docker to user groups. It does basically all the footwork for you when you're installing Docker. So I'm just going to run this instead. And this should install everything I need for Docker. Now, while that's in, being installed in the background and it does it silently because you can see it goes into DevNull, um, taking a look at his GitHub, which I'll leave a link down in the description below, um, he has this whole repository dedicated just for Docker OS X. And there are a couple of things with it, and I'm going to leave a link to his video because he goes into detail on each installation as well as what everything means and what you can do with it. I'm just going to go with the basic Catalina install. I'm just basically going to grab this and try to install this. But he does have different images. He has Big Sur, Monterey, uh, Ventura. Um, he also has pre-installed environments, which he does not recommend running on a production environment. Not even production environment in general. It's just not safe because the username and password is already preset. So there's a chance for vulnerabilities and everything for here. So I wouldn't recommend running this either. But yeah, if you want an older system like High Sierra, um, everything else is all here. Now he also has something called the naked images. Uh, let me see if I could go down a little bit and see if I could find it. Um, is it here? Pre-installed, pre-installed. Maybe he has it like further down. But before I talk about the naked images, um, here are some things that you might want to do as well because you can actually pass through your iPhone if you're doing some Xcode development. Um, or if you want to run certain things that requires USB, you could use that as well to pass through to the Docker. Now, once you're done installing everything, he does actually have an optimizer that you could actually make the OS X much faster and less um, uses less storage. And he also has something called, uh, I don't know if it's here, but he does have a serial key generator. So if you guys need to eventually run uh, iMessage and a FaceTime and stuff like that, he does have a um, serial key generator for that, which is right here, serial number generator for iMessage security. Now, if I've installed Mac OS before on my VMs, and technically I've always used it for iMessage because I use Bluebubble for my Android phone. This way I could get iMessage for my Android phone, but yeah. Um, he does have all that uh, generator and everything in here as well. Again, go through his video, which I'll leave a link down in the description below because he'll go through details of each operating system. I think he actually tries to install four operating systems at one time with his insane computer. And let's swap over back to our terminal. And yep, there we have it. So if I run Docker, should be running the command. Yes, there we go. So I'm gonna grab the latest, which is Catalina. And he tells that Catalina is probably the best to run because the other ones are a little bit heavy and it runs uh, with the most compatibility. So I'm gonna be running Catalina. Now you can run whatever version you want, but yeah, this is actually gonna download a bunch of stuff. It's 1.65 gigs. So it's gonna be a bit for this to download. So I've got fast internet connection, um, it'll be sooner, but yeah. It does take a little bit to upload. Now you might notice that I am actually running this on my desktop versus any Docker machines that I have. That's because um, no matter how you look at it, running OS X is a little bit heavier than you would expect, especially installing and trying to get the operating system working. So I would rather test on a system that I know has good amount of resources and a good CPU so I could play around with this. Because if I was to run this off any other box that I have right now, it might take forever just to install. Just off the bat, I know Catalina will take about half an hour. That's not even because of CPU. The, the operating system itself is pretty heavy and it takes a while to install. So I know off the bat, it's gonna take a while. So I'd rather give it the benefit of the doubt and apply it on a computer that I know works. All right, there we have it. 
Uh, this started up now. This is very impressive. So let me go zoom out so I could see this with the screen. Mac OS base system, UEFI. So I'm gonna go into Mac OS base system. Uh, in here, you could actually still type. And if you have VNC enabled, this is where you would change the password like it was on the Android um, on Docker video. You would do change, I think VNC password. And then you would just add the password to whatever you want. And then now you have VNC. Well, if I had the port open, VNC would be forwarded. So I don't actually have to worry about doing this. And if you are installing it through a Docker that is not your X11 shell, you might have to go through this step so you could VNC over to it to install the rest. But for now, I'm just gonna run it through my X11 shell. Now look at that, it's booting up with the Apple logo. And this is running off a of Docker. Well, technically it's running off QEMU. So yeah, you are virtualizing it, but it's still in the Docker. This is so impressive. I mean, I could finally get my blue bubbles working again through Docker instead of having to run a full VM, which I, I really enjoy. Now, what's really cool, again, if you got the naked image and I don't know if it's here or not, I did see it. Is it here, naked? Yeah, there's a Docker file called naked. Um, naked auto, is it here? Yeah, naked image. Okay, so what happens in the naked image, and he'll explain it in his video, is that after you first install the operating system, obviously when you redo the Docker, it might just reload the whole thing and then you might lose your installation and that kind of sucks because you have to sit through half an hour of installation. There is a way to actually just pull off the hard drive image so you can paste it onto this naked code. So anytime that you need to change something or add a port or update something, uh, using the naked image will not erase that hard drive and you'll retain all the information from your previous install while being able to update all the other stuff or change other option settings. Like if you needed to add a different port or something like that. So after you initialize uh, or after you do the first initial install, like what we're doing right here, there is a way to pull that. Uh, he does also talk about how to grab the image, um, how to do all this stuff. It, it goes into detail for a lot of things. I'm just showing you more of like, hey, this is possible. But if you want more details and get this working to exactly the way you want, you might want to check out his video. And I keep referencing it to it because it's a 25 minute video, but it does cover a lot of information, especially with all the operating systems. Now to install this, all you have to do is go into disk utility, uh, pop over here, and then where is it? Uh, you find the larger hard drive. So this one's 278, uh, 274 gigs, and you will want to erase this and name it to whatever you want. So I'm going to call this doc OSX, okay? And we're going to erase this. Now, because it's dynamic storage, it doesn't actually use 200 gigs right off the bat. Um, it just takes, um, as more the more you fill it up the bigger the hard drive gets so right now it's a very small size as you install this it will get bigger and bigger but it allows for 274 gigabytes maximum all right now that you're done with this you're just going to reinstall mac os continue continue choose the hard drive right i've done this install on hackintosh so many times um, after this, it should actually just tell you to choose your hard drive. Or I might just start the installation right away. Agree. Agree. Doc OX. Next. And there we have it. Oh, I'm going to let this install. Let this go through. Like I said, it takes, I don't know, half an hour or so. And then when it boots into the system, we'll be able to add our username, password, and then we'll have a Mac OS system. Now, GPU pass-through is not working yet. He does want to get that uh, working later in the future. So that is a possibility that that might happen. But for now, Xcode does work. You could get iMessenger working, FaceTime working. Camera could be passed through, I believe. USB phone for Xcode. Really for a development platform or to test something, this does work very well. All right, so here we go. We got finally to the prompt. It took about a half an hour. Uh, let me choose, can I just click on it instead? And United States right here. Continue, continue, continue. Don't transfer, continue. Uh, set up later for my Apple ID. You do need to do this if you wanna get iMessaging working, but 
I'm gonna skip that for now. Agree, continue, continue, continue. All right, so if I view this, zoom in. Continue. This should be like 19, you know, 1080 resolution. So 1920 by um, 1080. That's how come it's like just fitting on my screen. I'm just gonna zoom out again. I'm gonna leave it as dark. I like dark mode. Looks pretty good on this. Light mode looks pretty good as well, but I'm just gonna leave it as dark. But everything seems to be uh, installing pretty fine. It's working. It did take, like I said, half an hour. Um, and we have Mac OS running. Shift Z, Shift question mark, done. And there we have it. I am so impressed with this. You have no idea. like. Getting this to work in a Docker, obviously it's still emulation, which is QEMU, but still running this off of Docker, getting this all up and running, and all I had to do was just run that one command is so impressive. Uh, what happens if I open Finder? That works pretty well. Safari, internet's working. Let's swap over to YouTube. I'm just gonna play, I don't know, a video. I don't think sound is passing through this yet uh, because we are using the QEMU state. Uh, obviously, you could see that when it's trying to run graphics, it's a little bit slow because there's no pass through in any graphics. Um, otherwise, like it's actually lagging my mouse. Uh, I think I do this. There you go. Okay. That was lagging like crazy to play any videos, but you could see I'm dragging this over. I mean, there are some indications that it is like pushing the graphics over and there are some, what do you call this, uh, tearing. But I mean, it's working. Uh, if I go over to about this Mac, it's got three gigahertz processor, four gigs of RAM. It doesn't have a display, so it's gonna say seven megabytes. Uh, storage wise, it's gonna say 274, but realistically I only use about 15 gigs after install. And you could trim that down if you use this optimizer, which he has like a little script down here for. Regardless of that, you could also get the USB pass-through working. That is it, guys. I mean, running OS X on Docker is pretty impressive, and you could do what you want with it, run Xcode and a bunch of other stuff. Like I said, I already got a plan for it to run my Blue Bubbles again so I could get iMessaging back on my Android. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be doing. If you run into any problems or have any issues, make sure to check the GitHub issue board. He does have a lot of stuff over there that I might be able to solve your problems. He also has a Discord, so you can join his Discord, and he has a lot of other subforms in there that will be able to help you out with what you need to do. Again, Sick Codes is a really cool guy when I was talking to him so yeah so definitely check out his discord now if you are new to his channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts